It is the 11th of January 2023 and I'm just gonna assume that you already forgot about all your new year's resolutions and you're basically back to the old habits. Let's talk about the top five character traits which I've seen from successful student of mine. Over the past couple of years I've coached literally hundreds of people and I know which people are succeeding and which are not. And I think it's really valuable to understand what those people who actually do succeed have in common and which red line they're actually following. So without any fluff let's start with number one. One of the most important things you can do in your life is stop and think what you're doing. Most people are just stuck in a cycle of doing and doing and doing and they don't stop and think if they're actually doing the right thing. And what I've constantly seen the successful people do right is pauses where they actually think if they're going in the right direction. The very first thing you need to ask yourself is what do you actually want to achieve? Let's say you want to make money. That's a very general goal, super broad, not very specific. But anyways, you want to make money. The, the first question you have to ask yourself is what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis to actually achieve that? You go to your job, yes, great, so you make money, but does it have the potential to make more money than you actually have it? If the answer is no, then you obviously need something else. And the question is, are you actually doing that on a day-to-day -day level? Are you doing something which is gonna get you closer to that goal? If no, it's pretty obvious you need to start. But if you actually do things to, to get you closer to your goal, for example, you make your store, you test products, you actually try to do make dropshipping work. Here, it gets much more tricky because the next question you need to ask yourself is, do I do the right things to get closer to my goal? And unfortunately, most people just do things which feel productive and are not productive. Productivity is a very, very subjective thing. And sometimes you're gonna do a lot of things over and over again, and you're gonna feel super productive. You're gonna make an amazing story. You're gonna do a lot of different things, and you're gonna feel super productive. What I'm constantly seeing people do in the dropshipping field is getting almost to the launch, and then right before they start doing the ads, they don't do it for some reason. And they prepare the next product, and the next product, and the next product, make new store, do this and that, but they never get to the launch, okay? This is, for example, one mistake I've seen constantly a lot of people do. Or you test a bunch of products but they're all shit or you test a bunch of products and they're amazing but your content is shit or you're just using a TikTok strategy for Facebook or Facebook strategy for TikTok or you mess something up. Stop and think what you're doing. If you think back of all the tasks which you did for dropshipping today, were those actually things which if they went well they would have got, gotten you closer to profit or are you facing problems which you don't even really have? Is it that you worry about your suppliers before having orders? Is it that you create five different stores before making one work and actually testing that? Is it that you cannot decide on which product to pick and then just leave everything hanging? All those questions you need to ask yourself and make sure that you actually go step by step without fixing problems which you don't have. And unfortunately, fixing problems which you don't have feels very productive. You're gonna feel like you're doing something. And the reason for that is it's easy. It's very easy to find 25 suppliers. It's very easy to make an amazing store. It's very easy to make a perfect logo. It's easy to do all of those things. And that means that you're gonna feel productive doing them just because there's very clear tasks. So whenever you had a good day, you felt productive, you need to try to catch yourself, wait, did I actually have a good day or did I just feel amazing? Now the second thing links to the first point and it's, to-do lists. You need to make to-do lists and have checklist discipline. Whenever you do something, you cannot start doing it immediately. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a product and you're gonna think, all right, this product is amazing. I now need to do more research. I now need to make the ad. I now need to make the store. And you do 25 things before you even understand that that product has a flaw and you cannot test it. So what you need to do is just have a to-do list of things you need to actually make work and then not do anything else. Don't get too excited and start doing other things which are not on your to-do list. In the morning, you need to understand what you're doing in the day and only do those things, nothing else. And here again, I cannot emphasize this enough, are the things which are on your to-do list, if you do them right, are they gonna get you closer to profit? If no, don't do them. If you see something on your to-do list, which is not related to sales, do not do that point. It's as simple as that. Do you need to make a store to make sales? Yes. All right, so you need to make one store. Do you need to find a product to make sales? Yes, so you need to find a product. Do you need to have a supplier to make sales? No, that's your problem later. Do you need to have a perfect logo to make sales? 
No. Do you need to worry about accounting before you make sales? No. You have a bunch of different to-dos which are not your problem right now. So make sure that your to-do lists are only structured around money-making activities. The third thing which every dropshipper has in common that actually makes dropshipping work is that they only focus on one strategy. You only stick to one thing and do nothing else. And it's gonna happen that you do the right thing, but the wrong outcome happens. So you test the product, you did everything great, but you don't find a winner. It's just gonna happen. O on YouTube, if somebody ever tells you that every product they test is a winner, you can guarantee 100% that they're lying. It it's not reality, it just doesn't happen. What you need to understand is even the best dropshipper in the world is not gonna make every product work. This is a very clear indicator that if you test a product, it doesn't mean that the first product needs to work. However, the problem starts exactly here. You test a product that doesn't work and you think something is messed up with your strategy and you switch. Instead of Facebook, you now do TikTok organic. Instead of TikTok organic, you do Pinterest and you switch to different, different platforms. Or you test a product and you see, ah, it doesn't work. It was a high ticket product. Let me now try low ticket or the other way around. It doesn't matter. But stick to one strategy and don't expect things to work from try one. Don't expect that and get comfortable with you failing when testing things. It's a test and if you would understand what the upside is of a positive test, you would understand how many bad tests it actually would take to still be profitable with a positive one. If you understand that testing 10 products is gonna cost you $200 per product, which in total combined is gonna be $2,000, if you think that none of those products is gonna work. However, if product number 10 is actually gonna work, you also need to understand the upside of finding a winning product. And finding a winning product is worth way more than two thousand dollars way more so even if every tenth product would be a winner you are super profitable because a winner can make you tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in pure profit and and for some people even millions so those two thousand dollars are not relevant if you would have a lottery which has a winning chance of 10% and the ticket just costs ten dollars and the win is gonna be a hundred thousand dollars you would literally have a money glitch because you would just play 20 times on average win two times you've only spent like 200 dollars or so but you won a hundred grand so just try to understand the averages just think about the averages and not about one specific case even if a product does well on one day and then the next day it does terribly bad it doesn't matter one day doesn't count the second day doesn't count the combination two days together count more than one day so you need to take the average the entire week counts more than two days even i see this constantly where a student of mine comes to me and says says hey i had a terrible day today what should i do instantly the very first thing, thing i'm gonna say is i don't care about today I care about the last three and five days. How did it go in total? Did you make profits in the last five days combined? Yes, then everything is fine and you don't need to worry. If no, then we need to switch things up and test new things. However, you cannot switch things because you had one bad day, however, four good days before. That's not how it works. The next super important character trait is not being emotionally attached to anything you do. If you test a product and it doesn't work, you don't care about that. Even if you love that product, if you personally would buy that product, it doesn't mean anything. If you personally would not buy that product, it also doesn't mean anything. So it's really important to understand that you don't care about your personal opinion. If something doesn't work and the numbers say it didn't work, then don't keep testing that thing, but change. If you think it should have worked, it doesn't matter. Just move on. And the more effort you put into one product, the more emotionally attached you will get. If you test five products a day, you don't care about one thing at all. If you literally would test five products a day for a week straight, you wouldn't care about the outcome of one product. However, if you prepare one product for a month straight and it doesn't work, then you will be so emotionally attached to that product that you will keep testing new ads, new stores, new offers, new product pages, new platforms. You're gonna test so many things just because you've put in so much effort. But in the end of the day, how much effort you've put in doesn't matter at all. And the last thing I wanna mention here is your entire day should be structured around only two things. How do I find a really good product and how do I make the best possible content for that product? Those are the two questions you always need to ask yourself and those are the top priorities on your to-do list always. Until you have found something which does really well, those things are the only thing you need to think about at all. However, you need to do this in a very structured way where you understand what the criteria are of a winning product. And little hint, it's not problem solving, wow effect, a lot of AliExpress orders, and it already went viral on TikTok. That's not the criteria you should be looking out for. How we do it, for example, in the program is we have a 12 point system. 
and a product basically needs to fit all the 12 criteria. If it has one point, it means that it fits only one criteria. If it has 12 points, it fits every criteria. If you want to get access to the checklist, you can actually DM me on Instagram. I'm gonna link it somewhere here, and we're basically gonna handle that. And this is how you should structure things. You should be very intolerant with testing products. And also the content you make needs to actually be really, really good. And I'm not saying it needs to be professional. I'm saying it needs to be good. And there's a big difference because professional doesn't go viral. If you look at every Instagram page or every TikTok page, you don't see professional videos go vi going viral. You see viral videos going viral. And those viral videos are low quality, don't look amazing and too perfect. And they look like they're literally filmed with an iPhone and that's it. They, they don't look crazy. So those two things are crucial. So the last thing I wanna mention here is if you're actually serious and really want 2023 be your year in terms of dropshipping, sign up for a call with me personally. We're gonna find out if we're a good fit and we're gonna start working in a mentoring program where I'm just gonna guide you through exactly what you need to do. I'm gonna tell you exactly what a good product is. I'm literally gonna look over the sheet you make with all the products and tell you what product I like, which one I don't like, which is the best one. We're gonna start with that product. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to make an amazing video. I'm gonna connect you with our videographer if you don't wanna do it by yourself and then we're gonna start testing products the right way. Again, if you're actually serious, click the link below and I will talk to you soon.